Here we are again in our Godful for Today devotional uh, today. Welcome, my friends, and good morning. Let me read to us our text for today in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20 to 24. My son, keep your father's commandment, and forsake not your mother's teaching. Bind them on your heart always, tie them around your neck. When you walk, they will lead you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will talk with you. For the commandment is a lamp and the teaching a light, and the reproofs of discipline are the way of life, to preserve you from the evil woman, from the smooth tongue of the adulteress. One of the descriptions about the Word of God is that it's a lamp, it's a light, and the Father has emphasized to the Son here that His instruction should be the guide, the lamp and the light of His life. In verse 22, the father has emphasized to his son that his instruction should affect every aspect of his life, whether walking, lying down, and during his waking up, everything in his life, and wherever and whatever is happening in his life, the word of God must affect his life. And let me ask you today, what affects your life? Is it the words of men? Or the words of God? Is it the voices of the world or the voice of God? Thus, in verse 20 to 21, he earnestly begged for his son to pay attention to his words. Look at the tone of his words here in verse 20 and 21. My son, keep your father's commandment and forsake not your mother's teaching. Bind them on your heart always. Tie them around your neck. And this is not just an ordinary pleading, but an earnest pleading from the father to a son, it's like, please don't forget this. You must put this in your heart. You must cherish this in your heart. Tie them like a chain in your neck that it will not depart from you. Parents sometimes are like broken records as they repeat instruction to their kids, are they not? The importance of their instruction can be overemphasized, especially for loving parents. Sometimes they are mistaken as nagging, but actually because of their love to their children. So their children must bind them in their hearts and tie them in, in their necks. And this is because of a concerned father who could not take second chances because the temptation of the world is so strong and appealing to a gullible young man and especially to the forbidden woman or to the, to the adulteress. It was very appealing and very strong during the time of Solomon, how much more today, when we are in the advent of global connection because of the internet. It is a common observation that many children often present or resent parental guidance, but come to appreciate those instructions later in life. Very often, those who ignore the wisdom of their parents come to realize when they have kids of their own in the future that they will realize that their parents really were correct. This instruction uh, for the father to hide the word of God in their hearts, bind them on their necks, the Jews believe this that's, that's very important up to the point that they even copy an, um, a portion of Deuteronomy chapter 6 and they enclose them in leather cases and tie them to the left arm and forehead. And they call this phylacteris. And they wore it like an amulet, that if they wore this, they are safe and they are, they are protected by God. The intention is right, but the method is wrong. It's not because we carry our Bibles with us in our pocket or in our bag that we are protected. No, we, we don't take the Bibles as like an amulet. The Bible must be hidden in our hearts. Some people have the notion that, oh, I will make the Bible as the payload when I 
rest during the evening so that I will not dream evil dreams or I will not have some kind of nightmares. The intention is good, but the method is wrong. It's not intended for us to be like an amulet, but let the word of God dwell in our hearts restly. Today, unlike the Jews, we honor God by hiding his word in our hearts and obey it. Scripture should permeate our hearts and minds and souls as we read verse 22 that everywhere we go, whatever we do, walking, lying down, waking up, wherever we go, the word of God must permeate in our hearts. Even in our workplaces, there are some moments that we can just pause and remember the word of God so we can meditate on it. So that's what Joseph said in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 that the book of the law shall not depart out of our mouth, but we shall meditate there in day and night that we may be careful to do everything that is written in it because this is the guarantee that we can be successful and prosper. This is the guarantee that the son won't fall prey to the forbidden woman. The woman is so subtle she will operate in the power of darkness because this wicked woman is under Satan, who is the god of darkness. And she could lead him to stumble and fall. But the Father's words, just like the word of God, is the light, it's the lamp. As the psalmist declares in Psalm 19, verse 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So that Solomon said here in verse 23, the commandment is a lamp and the teaching is a light and the reproofs of discipline are the way of life. Now, the reproof of discipline are the way of life. Even the son must consider to subject himself to the father's discipline, the reproofs of discipline, because it would lead him to the right path, you know, it's the rod of correction that will remove all our wickedness, according to the Bible. The Word of God is God's instruments to make us righteous. As Paul declares in 2 Timothy 3.16, that all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching. That is what we are going to believe. For reproof, to correct us and to, to tell us that we are wrong for correction, to give us instruction how to make ourselves right, and for training in righteousness. The end result of our meditation of God's word is for us to become righteous, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So let's have a time of reflection today. The Bible stored in our minds, we can memorize it, we can understand it, we can explain it, but it's not, it's not okay if we just store it in our minds. It's, it must permeate in our hearts that we are going to apply it. In other words, the Bible learn is only effective if we apply it. Don't satisfy that you know the Bible, you know the Word of God, but let it be that we continue to apply it be consistent and conscientious and faithful in applying it in every aspect of our lives, in our relationship with our kids, our friends, our colleagues, wherever we go, with strangers, whatever we do, where, when we walk, when we lie, when we are awake, let it be that the Word of God will me every aspect of our lives. It's like walking in darkness. We need to have this lamp. Every step that we are going to take, the light of that lamp will guide us where to make our next step. He will lead us a step of the, of the way. Life is a journey in this dark world or darkened world because of Satan, because of sin. This is a fallen world, but thank God for his word. His word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Is he your savior? Is he your guide? Is, is he your your Lord in your life that you can really say that you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you have a relationship with God, 
so that the Holy Spirit is in you, who can guide you. We will use the Word of God as a light, as a lamp, to guide you in all your walk and endeavor of life. Let us pray. Thank you so much for your word this morning, Lord. Thank you for the, um, the truth that your word is a lamp unto our, our feet, a light unto our path. We do not need to stumble. The devil so subtle, the enemy is so deceit, deceitful, yet we can trust, Lord, that the truth, the light will expose his lies, Lord, so that we will not stumble. Lord, guide us today. We need you, Lord. Use your word to, to be a light so that we will not stumble and fall prey to the promptings and the temptations of the enemy. Thank you, Lord, for the victory we have in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.